everyone. Uh, kia ora koutou, uh, ko rongaronga te maunga, ko uh, Whanganui Atara te Moana, uh, ko Griff Takawangoa. It's great to have you all here. Uh, this is, as I said, the first event here in Wellington, and um, it's the turnout's been fantastic. My name's Griff, or Craig Griffiths, uh, but I'd, uh, please call me Griff. Um, it's a lot shorter. Uh, and I'm the Wellington uh, chapter host, which um, sounds a little bit like a gang leader, but haven't got to that stage yet. topic because it, like it's kind of UXE and CXE and designy but it also has that sort of people element. So a year ago almost to the week I realized um, I moved away from a job that was entirely focused on our external customers here at Trade Me and turned to focus on our employees. In that time we were already trying to shift culture at Trade Me. So my role was Head of User Experience. I had a team of UX researchers and we were trying to move that culture at Trade Me to be more user-centered. When I look at the vision that our team had, so this is, our, this is our vision for our UX team rather than for all of Trade Me UX, um, you can kind of see how we matured and Trade Me matured, matured along the way. So in 2014, our vision for our team was all about doing good research. Then the next year, it was all about doing good research in the support of creating good products. <coughs> and then and for the next couple of years after that, it was about driving a good UX-centered culture in the support of creating good products. And then finally, we actually dropped the products because we're like, if we're creating a good user-centered culture, then everything else kind of actually takes care of itself. The next was that I was kind of expanding into employee research anyway. Annie Brown, who is our head of people, no relation to me, um, came on board. And one of the first things she wanted to do was actually do what we called listening sessions. So kind of go across the organisation and understand sort of what that culture is. And I ran those with her. And what's cool actually is that every single one of our new values came from those sessions. So they were all suggested by people at Trade Me. And these were our four values. Customer aroha, hunger like Ed Hillary, there's no I in Trade Me, and don't be a dick. Um, and the final stream is really personal to me. So over those few years before I made this change, I changed. Um, four weeks annual leave wasn't enough to kind of spend time with the people in my life who I loved and I needed to spend time with. Um, and because mum died at 62, I thought, and my cousin died at 35, I'm like, Shit, working life could be all I get, you know, like, so I can't, I can't delay sort of what I need to do. Um, Annie Brown came back into the picture and offered me an option to stay working at Train Me two days a week in a new role which we called Head of People Experience. So she wanted me to focus on the employees and understand our culture. The first project I was given was to explore benefits, perks, events and rituals and we wanted to understand what was working about what we were currently doing, what we needed to improve and what was missing. But because lots of the stuff that we were talking about needed budget, in the short term we decided to focus on flexible leave, which was kind of which was sort of some of those ones that were really high up anyway. So we ended up with flexible annual leave. So this was the tenth most popular when we talked about it. It kind of gives people the, the chance to be more flexible. We sort of we tossed up on whether to have the cash in the annual leave one because there was also a thing of like, well you need leave to kind of to recuperate and stuff and then we're like, no, because the first principle of our principles is to give people flexibility. So that's actually more important than kind of me deciding that if you're saving really hard to go on a your OE that you can't kind of cash that up. And the next was wellness leave. And this isn't to be confused with kind of mental health days or duvet days. So we wanted to kind of make it broader than that, not just when you couldn't face getting out of bed. Like it might be good for when you can't face getting out of bed, but we also wanted it to kind of be for people who, we wanted it to be able to be used proactively. So if you're a person who doesn't use all of your sick leave, then you can, then you can use wellbeing leave to do whatever you want. So if I'm a person who runs marathons, then I can take the Monday off after a marathon on a Sunday if I'm really tired. If I'm a person who has kids at school, I can take this leave to go on their school camp. If I am a person who 
for whatever reason, needs more than my five days of sick leave, I can use wellness leave to top that up. So we didn't want to just increase sick leave because it wouldn't actually be a benefit to the people who didn't need that sick leave. We kind of wanted it to be a benefit for everyone. So what have I learned in my year of people research? Um, and how does kind of user research versus employee research differ? So what are the three differences? Recruiting is real easy. Confidentiality is next level. So this is recruiting for me now. We're coming to your office. We're going to shoulder tap some of you and have a chat. But confidentiality is massive. So I don't record any of these. I don't even write people's names on my notes anymore. Um, if anyone's in the room with me, they know that it's kind of extremely confidential. Um, experimenting with methods and iteration is really easy. As I talked about, I don't know if I'm going to use these again. Um, I'm playing around with an idea at the moment where um, I actually just send two managers off, shout them a coffee somewhere, give them a few talking points and get them to actually record a conversation that they have together because I'm kind of interested in what happens when I'm not in the room, kind of, you know, putting my biases on things and, and being a researcher. Um, I don't think I could do that for two customers, <laughs> it would be a lot harder. So it is really nice because people are willing to kind of experiment. And the last was that I didn't realise how digital product kind of centred my thinking was. I thought that I knew you knew UX and I kind of happened to be in digital, but what I realised is all my instincts were kind of for digital and for web. And so then I go to write a leaf policy, I'm like, how do you run a leaf policy? I have no idea. So unfortunately um, I had kind of amazing people in my team who I could literally ask that question to. And um, what are the similarities? Um, at its core, it's still about understanding people. Hopefully we're over the time of doing research that's kind of getting all people to do the same tasks and measuring success of those tasks. And it's all about people's motivations, people's behaviours, people's goals, what makes people tick. And at, the same, and at its core, it's the same. Um, and the problem is never what you think it is at the start. So obviously that was the case with benefits. So what's my big takeaway? Critical thinking always trumps a process or a method. So this is what you get if you Google design thinking. You get a million different processes for design. Design thinking is about critically thinking about what I know now, what I need to know, and how I'm going to get there. If I have someone starting out in design, I say learn the process, but really quickly after that, learn to break the process. Because the process doesn't guarantee good results deeply thinking about it as you go along is what guarantees good results. Thanks! Uh, first cab off the rank, I thought it went really well actually. Had some really great feedback and um, yeah, so there's some nice suggestions about uh, what we could do next and some topics and really uh, Ruth's presentation was really well received so yeah, very happy and uh, great turnout, really pleased that people have come out and supported it.